Hello everybody, my name is Mark and I am a computer science major, psych minor, NYU. Just finished up my first semester, going into 2019 with a lot of uh, intentions. And today I'm going to go into the past a bit uh, as part of the 10 years ago video series? I say series as if it's going to be my own thing, but it's not. So several years ago I came across a creator named Shady Penguin and... Uh, watched a bunch of his videos, but then I strayed away from watching YouTube and, you know, maybe went back every once in a while, but uh, recently something came on my radar, a video he made called Hashtag 10 Years Ago, and talked about his life and where he saw himself in 10 years. Correction, where he saw himself in 10 years, 10 years ago. In other words, 10 years ago, where did he see himself now? I figured I'd go ahead and give it a shot. So, since I'm 18, 10 years ago would be when I was eight, and my visions aren't really that broad. However, I do have some benchmarks, uh, such as letters I wrote to myself in the eighth and ninth grade. I threw away the one from sixth grade, which I don't know why I did that, but I vaguely remember it. Anyway, uh, pretty much, I kind of wanted to read it out, but that would take a while. Uh, it's these. It's this one, horribly handwritten, uh, with some little drawings on the back. You know, I, I start off by saying, how are, how are these things going? And I'm surprised that many of these are still part of my life, such as Oinkraft. Um, you know, I did the, the Pan Studio slash Cat on Arcade for such a long time, and I'm still making YouTube videos. Talked about a, a crush I had in the eighth grade. Said, how's MIT? Uh, didn't want to apply to intense schools, though. Anyway, this, this other letter, funnily, funnily, uh, funny enough, I redacted names, which you can kind of see. That's printed, so I'm able to read that, but... I don't know why, I don't know what the context is exactly, but I just asked myself about a bunch of TV shows. Um, but that's not the point. The point is that both of these letters have one thing in common. They both say, along the lines of, here, this one says, how are you doing the programming? Got anywhere? Animation? And then later on it says, are you still interested in psychology? How's the behavioralist stuff going? So I'm a computer science major and of six years ago, so I'll, 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 for me, this is going to be the six years ago video. Uh, six years ago, I still wanted to get into programming and psychology. What got me into psychology was the mentalist and being able to read people, and I, I feel like I have a good foundation of that. Uh, the computer science part is a bit more prevalent for me. I got into computer science and such by playing Minecraft, and I also got into animation that way, and here I am still trying to work on animation uh, and you know, majoring in computer science. I feel like my life would have taken a totally different turn because throughout high school and I guess middle school as well, I've always been more of a history uh, and English, so humanities kind of guy. Um, I guess I've never been innately great at the science uh, and math based things, which is a little odd, but um, computer programming stuck out to me so much because I could make plugins for a Minecraft server, which I have, I've made quite a few. Uh, and they got me into web design and web programming. I have a few web projects. That aside, I just wanted to kind of novel at the fact that I'm still interested in the same thing I was six years ago. And while my English class did make me contemplate whether I wanted to switch over to comparative literature as a major, um, just because, you know, I really love reading, I love writing, I've been getting into writing short stories uh, recently. Um, I still love computer programming. And... Over 2018, I feel like probably latter half of 2017 as well, it's very easy to categorize things with years. Uh, I kind of lost the the dreams I had, the passions I had for why I wanted to get into computer programming. Um, I know so many people do it for, you know, the jobs and the money, but in reality, you know, I've been really thinking about this for the past week or so. I, I want to program because it's one more way to make a game. And it, it, it drifted away, essentially. You know, I wrote plugins for Minecraft. I made the game do things. I made mini games that people played. And that was, you know, I wanted to use programming to connect with other things. And over time, I just, you know, I became more realistic and was like, oh, you know, I'll go into software development. I'll major to do software development and work at Google or work at Facebook or whatever. And I, I don't think that's the right direction to go down. For me and so you know looking back on that reading these letters and looking back at where i was i find that perhaps i need to go at this from more of a game design angle you know i love the logic of it i love the structure of it but i want to be able to do something with it you know i want to be able to draw last year 2018 i said i'm gonna draw every single day i made it to march 18th and you know i want to draw every single day but i just i didn't end up doing it. i didn't put in the time and so now i'm putting the time to draw I can write stories, I can I can make stories, my imagination has always been huge. Uh, 
I can pr I can learn to program it at least, and I'm getting better animating it. So maybe you know music's the next step. Uh, but hey, I can play the piano. I can read music really well. So maybe game design's in my future. But anyway, that's kind of one of the big goals I have. And you know, from this whole ten years ago, in my case six video, you know, I saw Shady talk about where he was going to be. And um, so I kind of picked the the thing that grounded me for such a long time is what I wanted to study. Um, throughout high school, I was always I always knew I wanted to do computer science. And doing it was the first time I've doubted it. But I think that's more in the face of face of it being scary, you know, face of it not me not being innately good at the math and the sciences and needing to put more effort into it, which is good. And I'm I'm appreciative of that now. Uh, and I do I, I I did well in my courses this past semester, so um, I I do intend to stick with computer science, believe it or not. And kind of going on that topic of me being innately better at you know the humanities, um, I just wanted to say don't let yourself be defined by one area. You know this is this is something I kind of not necessarily struggled with, but I always thought that I could either be defined as my ability to connect, my extrovertedness, or my ability to you know rely on myself, my introvertedness. This is wrong. I feel like you'll be told this in so many ways throughout your entire life, but letting yourself be defined by any one thing and not looking at uh, what you are and you know what other parts your life bleeds into. For example, if there's two things that you can be, you're never going to be 100% one of them. Hopefully you get my point, but uh, I just wanted to say that because the summer, the summer, the summer of my sophomore year in high school, um, over a, you know summer camp that I now work at. I took this this class. We you know offer classes. You know switch every other week. Uh, the details aren't important, but I took it. It was called Extreme Pretenders, and we pretty much played improv games and acting games. And I got this card. Uh, I know where it is. I'm not gonna grab it though. I got the most points of all the campers to be in this class, and I got the Master Extreme Pretender card. And I still have that card. It was written on a gold piece of paper. Uh, the person who gave it to me probably did not think it would mean as much as it did to me, but. Um, that and making videos on YouTube helped me, you know, th those videos helped me find my voice. Back in the seventh or eighth grade, I'm just going to recap this real quick. Just me and three other friends, you know, we had a YouTube channel called The Pan Studios, uh, and then eventually just stopped, and I decided to pick it back up again, and I rebranded it, because, um, you know, if you guys ever see this, you probably don't even know I continued it, but I, I felt like Pan Studios was the name that encapsulated the four of us me coming on later. So maybe just the three of you guys. So kind of an arcade was more of a me thing. Um, but doing those videos, you know, talking to a camera, playing with friends, meeting friends on the internet, sticking with those friends, you know, I think I've, I can call the three relationships I still have with the people from Prismarine SMP friendships. Those videos were the cake, uh, and the extreme pretender card was the cherry on top. Uh, to me auditioning for a play my junior year of high school. And I got in, and I got a pretty big role. It's Murder Mystery at the Murder Mystery. Pretty funny funny script, but it's not a very well-known play. And people gave me, you know, people told me I did a great job. And, you know, I really loved improv. I did drama that year as a junior as well. Again, because of that extreme pretender thing. Uh, and Francine's Will was another play that I was in my senior year. Again, got a pretty large role. I did a great job. Um, I wrote about the play in my college app. And I got into all four colleges I applied to. Um, you know, if I kept kind of driving myself towards just, you know, math and computer science, you know, English and history as a requirement, then I wouldn't be who I am. And I definitely would not be able to express myself. And through those two shows, I learned so much about myself uh, that I'm not going to get into. But if you had, you know, gone to the past and said, hey, little Mark uh, in middle school, uh, you, you love playing video games and you want to code a video game yourself one day, you're going to be in two shows and you're going to have big roles and you're going to, you know, you're going to be able to talk to people really well. I would have been like, no, no way. I, I was invisible in the ninth grade and I totally wouldn't have believed that. But having, you know, accepted having the, those fortunate opportunities such as the extreme pretender class or, you know, just making gameplay videos for no reason that got less than 10 views a video, you know, it helped me define a huge part of who I am. I don't know. I, and so this upcoming semester, I've made it a New Year's kind of goal to join an improv club or an acting group of some some sort. Uh, get into it in some sort because I do miss it. I do miss being able to express myself like that and not sit behind a desk studying and doing math. And, you know, that's the reason why this channel exists, because I want to be able to go out and do something explorative. These two scripts I hold on to. Um, 
I always know where they are, and the two letters I will always hold on to forever. The third thing is, uh, you know, goals for the new year. Uh, I mentioned earlier that, you know, I, I kind of lost my, my dream, uh, my passion for programming. It became software development. It became pretty much what everyone else is, in, you know, in computer science for. And uh, actually, I say that from a stereotypical point of view, but that's what I mean. Stereotypically, people are in it, you know, for the money, for the office, to work at Google, whatever. But... Truly, I'm in it to for people to experience, for people to play, for people to feel something. Um, I've I've been great at storytelling. Programming was the the missing component. You know, I could always learn to draw, although I'm still not great at it, and I need to work on it. I read a lot. I'm great at telling stories. I can write well. I just need to program. You know, next up, music. But that's another thing. Programming was what I needed to make plugins, and now I'm back under the programming thing. Where was I going with this? Point number three, languages. A while ago, I kind of realized I really need to t uh, step up with my French uh, because there was a situation in which, you know, knowing French would have been super helpful. And I'd known going into it. I, they asked me, you know, can you speak French? And I said, I have three years of school experience. I picked up French, Duolingo. I'm currently on a 54-day streak. I know nothing big, but hey, 54 is bigger than zero. No time to start than now. Actually, I'm just going to quickly go on to that tangent. Um... I know I've been caught up in this. I know I've heard people be caught up in this. I know it's stereotypically to be caught up in it, but, you know, it's not it's not too late to, you know, pick up the guitar, you know, something I wanted to... Something I still want to do. It's not too late to try the piano. A while ago, for example, Duolingo, the summer after the, the situation, I said, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, you know, I'm going to pick it up now uh, because I started in, my, in school and then I stopped it. And I told myself, you know, if I did it every day, you know, 50 experience every day, then I could become fluent in French by Duolingo standards in in two years. Um, something like that. It's probably not two years. But every time I, I got, you know, serious with that goal, it stopped. I ended up dropping it for one reason or the other. And, you know, that seed of starting, it's never too late. Because you might look back and think now, you know, okay, I don't know any language except for English and French. Well, so be it. Uh, but I've always been interested in languages. Fun fact, uh, I almost did linguistics or philosophy instead of psychology, but psych won out. Anyway, I've always been interested in languages, and French has been something I've been picking up with, and I want to pick up another one, and that has been Danish. For a while, I wanted to be Russian or Japanese, but Duolingo came up, and I was like, you know what, Danish, it, it's, it's not necessarily a new alphabet entirely, so it's probably a good third language to get into, and I probably won't get that serious into it, uh, since I think I'll need to learn Japanese for something coming up in a few years, maybe, if I'm lucky. Hopefully, fortunately. New Year's resolutions, that's always the thing. Is uh, I've always hated it when people say, I'm going to start this next year. Uh, for example, the drawing thing, I told myself I'm going to draw every day this year. I started that about a week and a half before December ended. Um, because you know what? Start now. Just whatever you're thinking of, start now. Don't start after the video. Don't start it when your TV show plays. Don't you know go get food and come back and finish in front of your your TV show or whatever front of Netflix. Just start now. Just get something done now. You want to get better at writing? Write a sentence down. Write an intro. Write a hook. That's all you need. Uh, start now. You want to learn a language? Start a streak on Duolingo. If you're 207 days in and you lose that streak, okay, that's a streak. You just forgot to do it for a day. Pick it back up. I'm just going to say now, two days is fatal. Something my ski coach always told me was that, or told the group, I should say, if you don't exercise after, like, you know, thoroughly exercising for three days, you're pretty much going to lose all the progress you've, make, you've made. And I think for habit forming, if you go two days without doing something, that's really bad. Now, on my previous point, pick it back up again. Start at square one. Uh, but anyway, the last part of this video, it's getting up to 20 minutes now, and I'm really sorry. Thank you for sticking around if you've been watching this entire thing or listening to it. Um, several years ago, I was very large into young adult fiction, uh, and I read a book called The Palette and Prophecy by Mark Frost. This kid's dad had this list of rules, and, you know, I thought it was really cool. For example, number one, the importance of an orderly mind. Just these mottos to live by, uh, and as a result, I made my own notebook, which I lost back in 2016, uh, but I made a new one, you know, it's never too late to start. I made a new one with a bucket list, and I now have 108 mottos that I've adapted and come up with, um, you know, throughout throughout the year. And I'm thinking I'm going to put one of these in each of my videos from this point on, just, you know, as a, as a fun note. On the, that note of those mottos, one of the mottos that I've been sticking to very closely for the past several months is, you will always regret the actions you do not take more than the ones that you do. 
Uh, and there are two very large inactions I did not take in 2018. Uh, one happening back around February, March ish. Um, and, and the action that I kind of regret not having, you know, it's, it's really stuck with me, uh, which is unfortunate, but it's very much stuck with me. Uh, I still learned from the action that was taken, uh, and we're human. We can't take every action, but anyway, um, for the latter seven months of 2018, that became my, my mantra that became my thing this year. Uh, and I encourage everyone out there to do the same is to find a new mantra. Um, now I, I picked another one of my quotes and I did take this from somewhere, but of course I didn't write down the credit for it. So hopefully I'll throw that up on the screen right now. Discipline is the honing fire by which talent becomes ability. Take from this what you will, but my take is that I need to be in more in control of what I do. Uh, and it also goes with another quote or motto that I have is go for what you don't want. Um, I take a cold shower, freezing cold for at least two minutes. Uh, at least that's not what I'm going to do. This morning, uh, I lasted, I think, like a minute and a half before I had to turn it to hot. Um, but just kind of sticking it and just saying, just do it. You know, the warm is here. The cold is here. Stick it at cold and keep it there. Um, you know, deadlines for things that I make on my own, such as, you know, plugins, um, website that I still need to do, you know, projects that I want to do. All that stuff, that's what I'm focusing on this year. So not necessarily a goal, uh, you know, drawing every year, drawing, sorry, <laughs> drawing every day, all that stuff. That's a resolution. But this is, this is a, this is a focus for the year is to a focus for the rest of my life. I suppose is to focus on going for what I don't want. If you have the ability to type in Y O U T in your web page, in your web, excuse me, in your web browser, and it will autofill YouTube and you hit enter, you see a suggested video and you click it or Will you go to udemy.com and pay $10 for a course that is like 95% off for a total blender uh, instruction video that will totally change your 3D animation life? Which one will you choose? Will you choose the thing that you can sit back and give yourself a short temporary fix? Or will you choose the thing that is long, hard, you know, takes a while, it, there's a quote by, I think, Bruce Lee. It was like, I'd rather live a long, hard, a hard, a long, hard life than a short, easy life. I don't think I've ever gotten anything so wrong in my entire life. Um, and that's, you know, all those ideas in the past uh, five-ish minutes of this video are what my focus of 2019 is going to be. And I encourage everyone out there to do the same. That's what I'm going to tell you right now. If you're sitting there, uh, I don't know, if you're in middle school or if you're in high school, don't focus on, you know, focus on what you like, but focus on why you like to do that. Try not to lose your vision. Your goals are going to change. Your intentions in life are going to change. Um, who knows? In in a year from now, I might be making another video like this and be saying I'm a major in comparative literature with a minor in psychology or a minor in theater drama. Who knows? Um, anything can change. And it's never too late to change. Uh, my sister I was talking to, she's on her last semester of university, uh, college, and she was saying she knows people who have switched their major like three times. There is no long story short, but just remember to not, not lose your dreams, and if you can't find yourself, create yourself. That being said, thank you so much for watching and listening. Uh, if you made it all the way through, it means a lot. If you haven't subscribed already, hit subscribe down below. I have not mentioned this, I don't think, but for this channel, uh, one of my other goals is to get a video out every single Saturday. Changing it to Monday because it makes more sense to edit things I've recorded over the week on the weekend than upload them at the start of the week. Eventually, I want to work up to a Wednesday and a Saturday, but every single Monday is my goal for right now. So have a good one. And as always, don't forget to stay awesome.